Okay, so the uh, Humanity Season of Creation DVD has to be in the post today. So I'm going to have a go at a single take uh, talk for you to go along with the main reflection. Picking up particularly the ideas about uh, humans as the image of God and also as the servants and protectors of creation. It was Norman Harbel who first uh, highlighted the difference between those two stories. The first one with humans as the image of God and only humans and given dominion over the planet and things being delivered into their hands, very much putting humanity uh, at the top of the pyramid and being given the earth to use. Genesis 2, by contrast, which most people see as being a much older story, casts humans in a subservient role to creation. God wants to build this wonderful garden and needs someone to look after it. And so he creates the Adam from the Adamar, the earthling from the earth, to till and keep. We usually translate, but Norm Harbel points out that the Hebrew root words for that are actually serve and protect. The Adam is created to serve and protect God's garden. It doesn't belong to humans at all. Now, Mark Brett, in the Earth Story in Genesis, um, one of his articles in there on earthing the human, looks at the idea of humans being in the image of God and makes the argument that actually that's primarily a human justice story. It's about democratizing uh, humanity. He points out that when uh, the story was written, and I guess this is for people who uh, take uh, some of the scholarly um, study of the Bible seriously and don't see it as being written by Moses, when Genesis 1 was written while the Jews were in captivity in Babylon, they were thrown into a system where the king of Babylon was said to be the image of God and only the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, claimed dominion over not only all of the earth and the lands, but over all of the people underneath him. Now, the Jews thought that was terrible, but they were smart enough not to go marching down the street chanting that they too were just as important as the king, because that would lead to a fairly dramatic and sudden response, probably. But instead, in their creation story that they fashioned as a critique of the Babylonian creation story, what they said was that, as far as they were concerned, everyone was equally important to God. All human beings were created in the image of God, and all human beings were given dominion over the planet. What does that mean for us today? Well, if you've looked around and it's ever seemed to you that rich and powerful people have more say in the way the planets run, if you've ever noticed a time when some people's lands are taken off them or they're not able to control them in the way that they might want to, if you've ever seen rich nations dumping waste on poor nations, then the Genesis 1 story has something to say about that, doesn't it? So Genesis 1, even though it talks about creation, a number of people, and I think they're probably right, are saying it's not actually about creation primarily. It's about human beings and our equality before God. The second story, Genesis 2, is a much older story, of course, um, at least if you accept the scholarly consensus. It's probably the uh, earliest story we have. It reads much more to me uh, like an Aboriginal dreaming story. It has God wandering through the garden and the earthling, the Adam, being created from the Adamar. And in that story, humans are there, this oldest story, their primary function and calling is to serve and protect the earth. So in any discussions about what we should be doing, whether it's uh, forestry or fishing, the primary question we're meant to be asking ourselves as human beings is how can we best serve and protect God's earth in the decisions we're making? Not about economics, not about human benefit even, but how do we serve and protect God's earth in this situation? A very different way from the way most of our discussions about what we call natural resources often goes. So that's just a little bit more on the Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 stories. Now, if you take the Bible uh, literally and come from the school of thought that says that Moses wrote it more or less as dictated by God, then that's fine. It's even more incumbent upon you. If it's actually not just a story that was created by the Hebrews under divine inspiration, but actually what God wanted us to know, then God is telling you that you are here to serve and protect creation. That is your primary calling. Now the story goes on, of course, in Genesis 3 to talk about the fall. And some people have tried to use that as, as an excuse to get out of serving and protecting creation because that's an unrealistic expectation now given that humans ruined the world, at least as the story goes. But if you're a Christian, 
then you believe that you have been redeemed. And if redeemed, restored to God, then surely redeemed and restored to your primary calling to serve and protect God's planet. Good luck with that. <laughs>